Chapter 8. I Hear Voices. Maybe it won't be as bad as you think, says Jake as we walk into our square. It will be, I say. He'll be watching Ein Platz in der Sonne. Now, what's Ein Platz? Whatever you said. Ein Platz in der Sonne. I made it up. It's the same as a place in the sun, but in German. Jake laughs. It's not funny, Jake. He's going to be so grumpy because I haven't apologized for shouting at him last night. Oh, that's easy, Jake beams. Just say sorry, like I do. You don't actually have to mean it. I look around the square. The sun is shining on the grass, on our tree, on the roofs of the park cars. Mrs. Flower is out in her front garden. She's pretending to cut her roses, but all she's really doing is nosing around, checking what other people are doing. She won't be able to see much of Grandad though, because his curtains are clamped shut as usual. It's Friday. I should be looking forward to a weekend in the tree, but instead I've got to spend it at Grandad's. All day at school, I've been thinking of ways to get out of it. I asked Rebecca if I could go to hers, but she said it might be weird because our mums aren't talking and she thought I was being mean to Grandad anyway. Jake said I could stop at his, but his dad doesn't speak to me. I would be okay if parents, including mine, didn't interfere. So there's nothing for it. I have to stay at Grandad, with Grandad, but the hardest thing is that I have to apologise for storming out on him first. The red numbers on the cooker are flashing 0000, zero, 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 zero as I open Grandad's back door. Samson is in the corner licking the last bits of jelly meat from his bowl. I bend down and give him a stroke. He purrs and rubs his head against my legs. I listen for the rumble of the TV or music from the radio, but there's nothing just to the sound of my breath as I creep through the kitchen into the hall. Grandad must have fallen asleep in front of the TV. I hope so. That way, I can just sneak up the stairs to my room, go without tea, and hope that everything will be okay in the morning. I creep past one of the clocks, then the radiator, then peer around the frame of the door. The tiny spotlight is on, and Grandad's leaning forward in the shadows with his head in his hands like he's crying. The only time I've seen him cry was at Grandma's funeral, but then everyone cried at Grandma's funeral, including me. I don't want to see him cry. I don't think he'd like me to see him cry either. I go to lift my left foot and creep past the doorway. Grandad raises his head. I step back. So, he murmurs, that is what I did today. Went to Tesco, chatted over the fence to Mrs. Danes, and that is about it. Oh, and of course, I went to the clinic. I peer into the room. Who is he talking to? One of his friends from the German friendship group. He'd be, he'd be talking in German if it was, was, and I never saw anyone come into the square anyway. And he can't be on the telephone because he hates using it. Maybe he's just talking to Samson, but he's still eating in the kitchen. Felix is fine, but I am thinking he misses you as much as I do. Grandad turns his head towards the mantelpiece. He's talking to the picture of Grandma, the one where she's sitting on the seafront wall licking an ice cream. He must be missing her as much as me. More even. I saw her lots, but he lived with her for over 50 years and saw her every day. I lean back. My shoulder knocks against the clock and the clock knocks against the wall. Felix, is that you? Felix! Uh, yes, Grandad, I say, panicking. Good, he says. I was wondering where you were. He peers round the door, smiling. He doesn't seem to care that I might have heard him talking to Grandma. Come in, he says. I've been thinking mm, to Grandad, I stammer. <clears throat> I'm sorry about last night. Yeah. Grandad waves his hand when he flicks a midge off his tea. That doesn't matter. I've not been feeling myself lately. But I shouldn't have shouted, I say. And it's not you I was mad with. I was mad with myself. Grandad nods as he gets comfy in his chair. I know, he says. But forcing you to read is not the best way. So I have been sitting here thinking to myself. And talking to Grandma. I am thinking, what can we, I mean, what can I do with Felix? Are you going to buy me something, Grandad? I sit down next to him. 
thinking this weekend might not be so bad after all. No. Because if you are, can I choose? I don't need any more woolly jumpers. Grandma knitted me a whole wardrobe already. Granda chuckles. No, I am not buying you anything. You will just have to wait and see tomorrow morning when you wake up. But it will be something that helps you keep still. Helps you concentrate. A DVD, Grandad? A game for my PS4? No, no, nothing like that. No. He grunts as he pushes himself out of his chair. I think it is time for tea. Okay, I say. I'll get the knives and forks. Good, you do that. Grandad ruffles my hair. I am glad we have talked. Me too, Grandad, I say, and I am sorry. It's okay. Nur morgen, nur fine, he says sharply. What does that mean? I ask. New morning, new start.